Never again will we see the day that the Lizard Circus should fall to the Lizard Barber Shop. Long live the Potato Ship! Welcome back to the Bluecast with your fabulous and unstoppable host, Dictator Joe. I hope you all had a great Easter and April Fools. There has not been a single blue cast in months, so I'm going to try very hard and speed read through a bunch of news. Right now we have some very late obituaries to deal with here, because on January 20th, some strange shit went down and three prominent poopers, well semi-prominent poopers, went down on the same day. Movie Acid, Ha Ha Hound, and Jabbercash all mysteriously disappeared without a trace. Jabbercash did leave his final YouTube poop behind to creep Luigi so that he could upload it, but nobody's heard from any of these three guys aside from that. Some people have speculated why they left, but there doesn't seem to be any connections between the three, and it's still really strange for three great guys to throw in the towel like that on the same day. Unrelated to these disappearances, Guy Safari has also announced that he is done with YouTube poop, but he did so in a lot less of a dramatic fashion, simply announcing that he will not be making any more videos. More recently and more relevantly, there have been a lot of YouTube poop contests around this time. Sir Smeargle's contest, Poop Club, just recently came to an end and will have its next chapter of the contest next year. Emperor Lemon is in the middle of his second YouTube poop March Madness, and since it's April, we can assume that it's moving a little sluggishly. But on the bright side, at least now you have time to watch all the entries if you haven't. Bender Pictures has returned to the YouTube poop scene and announced that he will be doing the third installment of Poop Standoff. Once the starting video is out, you should definitely join that. I believe it's open to all poopers if the rules have still stayed the same. Oh yeah, I'm also very proud to be one of the judges of that contest. And yes, I will accept bribes of large sums of money, so please pay up if you want to win. Alright now, here's the big news, fellas. And it's kind of a big deal, and it's pretty close to home for us, so let's hop to it. Do you guys remember David Bailey? Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure you didn't forget him. He doesn't have anything to do with what I'm talking about, though. Recently, my longtime friend slash slave in this community, True Two Poops, had his dad's business friend over for dinner. As it would turn out, the guy's son is a manager of the YouTube partnership program. And part of that job is that he's always searching YouTube for new talent. So they showed the friend one of the videos that True Two Poops made, and he showed it to his son. It turns out, he loved it. And he's even gone on to find other YouTube poops that he loves too. True to Poops has continued talking to this guy through his dad and through the other guy's dad for a really long time. And there might be a collab in the works that could officially be presented to YouTube by using public domain sources. The last I remember, he was looking into seeing if the idea of public domain sources would be perfectly okay. And something about the guy being interested in YTPMV. So if you're a YDPM viewer and you think you can help us with this, maybe? Talk to True Two Poops. And I know this probably sounds really great, but I'm going to have to give you the bad half of it too, so you don't get your hopes up. The YouTube manager told TTP directly that if he were to currently report what he saw, they would have to shut down the channels of every YouTube pooper that he watched. That could be you, that could be your favorite pooper. Who knows who it is? Now he's being cool and pretending like he hasn't seen anything, but if he's serious, I am a little worried about what happens when YouTube gets a collab from a bunch of poopers, and they have to stop pretending that YouTube poop doesn't exist and actually do something about it. Anyways, if you see TTP, you should thank him for fighting for YouTube poop, and then tell him to get back to work and start whipping him. So yeah, look at all this. We got YouTube pooper suicides, a bunch of YouTube poop contests that are being delayed and fought over, and an undercover YouTube manager working with one of our own to get YouTube poop to YouTube. Sheesh, the story of YouTube Poop is actually more interesting than petty drama for once. It hasn't been like this in years. Anyways, it's time for the most depressing blue cast to ever exist, guys. You're all gonna want to quit YouTube Poop by the time I'm done. That's right. It's the top five things that make YouTube Poop and the community so great. This episode is so depressing that I had to leave it at five, because I don't think anyone could handle hearing me rant for another tenor. Alrighty, folks. Now, before you go attacking me in the comments for leaving this thing out or not mentioning that, note that these are g very general themes and they're not supposed to be specific, so yes, I will be leaving things out. And that I'm also choosing things that people might not be able to see right off the bat rather than something that's obviously plain and concrete. Number five, YouTube poop is like nothing else. This is one of the more self-explanatory ones on the list. If you want to watch the king go on a magical adventure in Pingus Land, 
Or you want to watch an episode of Spongebob torn up to the point that it haunts your nightmares? What are you going to watch? YouTube Poop. The true spontaneity and variety of YouTube Poop is something that you can't capture in any other genre. On one tab, you can have Hotel Mario intro every noun replaced with dinner. And in the other, you can have a fast-paced, loud, and flashy I'm a person video. And you can say that these two things are the same kind of video. You can have someone sentence mixing the king to sing a song, and you can have Mata Anonymous doing what, whatever the hell he does, and it's the same kind of video. On top of that, on top of that, you can open your Vegas or your Premiere or whatever you use, maybe a toaster, and you can make your own one of these videos, and you can say it's what I'm a person does, it's what Mad Anonymous does, it's what Dinner Warrior does, it's what Joe the Blue Dragon does. It's what all these guys do. I don't really have a lot to say about this one because I think you get it, and plus it's sharp. It'd probably start cutting into another number on the list. Number four, the attention. Bring on the flames! I realize that this is an upbeat and happy list, but this is the blue cast after all. If I'm not saying something controversial that's gonna piss half of you off, then you need all your time back. Now, if I could take something that Chemistry Guy once said and mangle it to the point that it's unrecognizable and present it to you guys. YouTube Poop is one of the things where you get to have your talents viewed by a ridiculous amount of people. And yet you don't even have to get up on a stage or anything. You don't have to look a single one of them in the face. Stage fright doesn't exist with YouTube Poop. Because nobody's watching you, except David Bailey, until you're completely done. And you fixed every single detail until you can call it perfect. And even then, they're only watching what you made, not you. People constantly love to act as if trying to get subscribers and views and attention is some sort of evil thing, and they like to call them attention whores and gossip about them in their little chats and send them messages telling them to fuck off, but then they try to hide the messages so that no one else can see them. Let me just clear the air for you guys. Everyone who makes YouTube poop and uploads it to YouTube is an attention whore. If you were really doing YouTube poop for the sake of fun of making it, and you didn't care if anyone watched your videos, you would have no reason to upload them and you wouldn't upload them. You'd keep them on your computer and you'd just laugh at them yourself because you didn't need anyone to watch them. When you upload videos to YouTube, you want people to watch them. And that's okay. It's okay. It's like I said before. Why would you waste all that time making something if you didn't want anyone else to ever see it? You don't have to get all defensive and be like, Oh, yeah, I'm a macho tough guy. I wouldn't care if anyone watched my videos. I don't care about people. I'm just too cool for that. I don't care about anything. You make YouTube poop because it's fun to do and fun to watch, and just as fun to have other people watch. So if we can just cut the whole attention whore name calling shit, we'd be in such a good place right now. Oh shit, my passive aggressiveness derailed the list. Anyways, back on topic. I have a YouTube poop with about 7,000 views on it, and that's not even considered a lot in this community. Even if only one seventh of those people actually watched the video, it would still be a thousand. Try to imagine a thousand people. It's a whole damn lot. To be able to show your work to a thousand people without even having to look at them or know who any of them are, that's pretty cool. Now it's not exclusive to YouTube Poop, of course, but I didn't say that all of these were exclusive to the genre. You just gotta admit that it's pretty cool to be able to do what you love, then have hundreds of people enjoy it too. That's just so amazing. Number three, the community aspect. The community, or should I say communities, surrounding YouTube have always interested me more than the actual videos themselves. I honestly believe that every person who wants to have a place in this community can have a place in this community. Maybe it's not up with YouTube, or maybe you're not the type of guy who's into Skype groups. Or maybe you think that TLD is for nerds, but you do have a place somewhere in this huge community. The thing that bothers me to no end is when people get fixated on this small part of our community and get convinced that that's the entire community. I hate to bring Mewtwo into this, but it's the only realistic example and you have to agree with me on that. I just constantly see people quitting Mewtwo, then coming back, then leaving, then coming back, then complaining that no one likes them, then leaving, then coming back, then reminding everyone that they think no one likes them, they don't fit in. It just makes me want to scream sometimes, and there's nothing I can do about it because they don't listen to me. Even if I were to invite them to the Little Dragons, they'd say, nah, don't think I'm that desperate yet. It's sad that some of you are taking what I just said completely seriously. For real though, they'd sign up and make an account and then they'd say, Alright, I did what the nerd said, now time to never make a single post, 
and not to do anything that Joe tells me in the blue cast, because I gotta focus on making everyone on YouTube love me by telling them how much they hate me. And then they leave again. I realize that, uh, to you, I'm probably just whoring out TLD again. But to be honest, I don't care if you go to some Skype chat group or some other group of guys on YouTube. I just want everyone to realize that they have a group, and there's not just one place in this community. It pains me to see people talk about themselves so badly just because they're trying to constantly force themselves to be a part of YouTube when it's just not the place for them. Of course, TLD is not the place for everyone, and I'm not stupid enough to think that. But if you're not going to give every place a fair chance, and you're fixated on this one group, you're just ruining your own fun, and that's your own fault, and you almost deserve what you're getting. Number two, friendship and camaraderie. Oh no, he didn't just. Did he? In 2010, if you told me I would have friends on the internet that I care equally about to some of my friends in real life, I would tell you that you are an idiot and you knew nothing about me. Back then, I was so sure that being friends with people who you would never see face to face was straight up impossible. And if you tried to do it, you were a weirdo. Now I've met people I would gladly give an arm for, just to protect. You probably think that this isn't exclusive to YouTube poop, but I gotta say that I think it kind of is, at least to the extent that it is. I've been a part of a number of internet communities in the past, and none of them have touched me like YouTube poop has. There's something about this genre. The people who just do this crazy ship just happen to be some of the best people in the entire freaking world, and I just can't explain it. Now, I'm not picking favorites amongst my group, but the best example that I personally have for this is Doom Zappo. He lives in the Netherlands, and I live in boring old rural Pennsylvania. There, is absolute, there was absolutely 0% chance of us ever probably meeting each other once, but he just happens to be one of my closest friends in this community now, and it's because of YouTube Poop. YouTube Poop can take two people who may not have any chance of meeting each other in real life and make them tight friends just because they both think it's hilarious when the king says dinner. Now, Smonge was the one to coin friendship and camaraderie as the slogan for the Little Dragons, but I would have done it in a heartbeat otherwise. The people I've met in this community are just so amazing. And I'm sure that the people you've met are amazing too. And I think we should all just take a quick second to tell all the people that we care about in this community that we heart them. We heart them. And I heart you. Now there are those in YouTube poop who would like nothing more than to tear up friendships and to beat down groups because they think it's funny and it makes them feel better. Then they'll hide and pretend to be the victim as they go off telling a guy to kill himself just because they made videos that he doesn't like. And uh, oh shit, sorry, happy thoughts, I forgot. Now you're probably wondering what could be number one on this list. So I'll tell you. Number one. YouTube poop can be whatever you want it to be. Hey guys, do you remember those billion times that I complained about someone trying to tell other people what to do and what not to do in YouTube poop? Well, it's because I'm trying to protect this little statement right here. The true beauty about YouTube poop, as I mentioned, is that it's not like anything else and that it can be anything. The creator just opens up his video editor and does whatever the hell he feels like. You can take a bunch of media, videos, pictures, and audios, and then transform them into whatever you want, whatever you're able to create. YouTube Poop just puts the creator in such a position of power over all these things that people have already created, and lets them make whatever he wants out of it. Or she, sorry. Sentence mixers can make the king talk about whatever they want him to talk about. The heavy effects poopers can take the most boring video in existence, and turn it into this crazy thrill ride. And there are those who would like to take this freedom. Oh, wait, not again. Well, actually, it is kind of related. This is the number one thing that makes YouTube poop great and fun. So what do you think would happen if you take it out of the equation? I gotta figure that it would be less fun, right? And I'm all about having fun, because YouTube poop is about having fun. So if you're not having fun, then have some fun in the sun and make YouTube poop the way you want it done. That was awful. Why did I just do that? Basically, when someone tells you that dinner isn't funny anymore, feel free to use it even more in your next video. When someone tells you that ear rape sucks, you might want to consider raising the overall volume of your next video. And the most important part, when someone asks you what anime is this, block them. Please. Think of the children. YouTube Poop is all about the creator, so if you're not having fun, then you should change that. 
And I honestly feel like I've beaten this idea to death so many times in the past that I'm just repeating things that I've previously said. So just have fun, lighten up, and joke around, because that's what YouTube Poop's all about. And don't let anyone else get to you. It's your videos. Make them the way you want them. Make them whatever way you're having fun. So I think that's it. YouTube Poop's like nothing else. It's a great source of attention and feedback. It's a great community experience. You can get a lot of great friends from it. And it's whatever you want it to be. I hope you've enjoyed this Bluecast episode as much as I had making it. But before I go, I want to tr test trial a little idea that I've been thinking about for the next episode. For a long time, I have been very interested in the sub-communities of YouTube Poop, and I thought it might be an interesting idea if we gathered representatives from all of the groups, or at least the more prominent ones, and had each of the representatives talk about their little slice of the community and people in it. I just wanted to know what your thoughts would be on this idea. I already have some of my own problems with it, but I do really think it's a good idea, and you guys seem to prefer the episodes with multiple interviews and more interaction, so I think it could be a win-win. Anyways, leave your thoughts in the comments, and I'm off until next time.